Research Project, Roads of Redemption. I have my brother here from Sydney, Australia, over there in Maroubra, Dean Clark, brother. Thanks for joining me and uh, giving me this opportunity to interview, bro. No worries, brother. Always a pleasure with you, mate. Always a pleasure. Good man. All right. So just a brief bio on the man. Uh, grew up in Maroubra, eastern suburbs of Sydney. Uh, became a bra boy at the age of 18. 19 years old. Uh, went to prison. Served two and a half years, four years all up. You now have a baby girl and you operate a successful business. Uh, so yeah, it, give, us, give us a little bit of uh, uh, backstory on, on the man. Yeah, no worries, mate. Well, um, yeah, I, I come from a, a good family. I, I had I had the good family upbringing, you know. Mum and dad still together. Got a got a brother, two years older than me. Yep. So so I can't I can't really go down that path of having the bad family upbringing or anything, you know. But um, yep. everything that I ever sort of got, it was sort of, I can say, you know, man, my old man was a bit of a crook, you know what I mean? Like he never, he was in jail from a young age. From up in Queensland, from in in Bogger Road, mate. So, in the in the late sixties, he was in jail up there, and and fuck, I'm pretty sure it was pretty hectic jail back then when I was yeah. all the time back then. Yeah. But but um yeah, everything we've ever got is from him. Like he he says, I've never worked for a paycheck in my life, you know. <laughs> but he's old we've school. got we've had everything we've ever wanted, you know. Old school from that, you know. Like so, mm. we were brought up with with old school morals, like. He used to say to us, we always respect your elders, you know, and two things that we've always had to, to pretty much run on in life is you never run away from a fight. Yep. And the golden rule in my family is you never give anyone up. He laid that law down to us from a very, very young age, you know. So old school fella, you know what I mean? That's, that's just how we were brought up. My mum yep. never been in trouble in her life, doesn't even swear. She's a beautiful yep. woman, my mum, you know, so... They're, they're, they're completely different, me mum and me dad, but I've had the best upbringing I probably could have had, mate, you know? And were you guys brought up uh, up there in Queensland? or, or was No, no, dad just went up there and got pinched trying to knock off a, a container full of army rifles and got okay, done yeah. for it. So <laughs> so, he, so he got done for that up there, but no, he born and bred down in Maroubra as well, mate. So tell us about um, like uh, Maroubra, like I said, you, uh, you became a bra boy. Like for those that don't know what a bra boy is, uh, what is a bra boy? Well, mate, it's just, mate, there's so much different things, you know. The media put us one way. But really, at the end of the day, it's just a group of mates hanging down that beach. Not anyone can just rock up down that beach and, and become a bra boy, you know what yeah. I mean? You've you got to put a, a good, solid, solid 10 years or so in with the boys to know that you're solid. Yeah. You've got to be able to, like, you, you know, you can't... Back when I grew up, you, you, there was no... If it was on, it was on. You know what I mean? If you that that beach will spit up and chew you out in a heartbeat. Like if you you can't shit yourself in a stink. It's just there's a lot of testosterone down that beach. <laughs> so it's, when it comes to to surfing, even surfing, mate, everyone's trying to outdo everyone surfing. Then it comes to partying, everyone's trying to outdo each other partying. Yeah. And, and same in street fighting. It's just I don't know, but it, it's like a, it's a family down there. You know yeah. what I mean? So a, a lot of the boys do come from broken homes. So it, it it just becomes a brotherhood, mate. You know what I mean? So it's, you, you got to, like I said, you got to do a good 10 years or so to know it's called getting scarred up. So you, you, you can't just rock up down there and disarm a bra. But we've got our certain handshake we do. And um, it, it's some of the older boys will come along after 10 years and say, you know what, like you get the call up pretty much. So he's solid. And about, oh, you, go up, you go up the tattoo shop. At the time when I was getting it, there was Sleeve Master up the cross. Yeah. And yep. um, you go in there, mate. It's like you grow up down that beach and when you've got all the older boys around you, all you want to be is a fucking bra boy. You know, when mm-hmm. you're a young kid growing up there, you're trying to impress the older boys, trying to, you know, show off whatever it is down there. And then when you go to get scarred up, mate, there's probably, I reckon, 60 of the boys, 50 to 60 of the boys at a tattoo shop out the front on their drink. You're in there and you, you get your bra boy tat and then probably even worse than the pain of getting the bra boy tat is having to come out the front of that uh, that tattoo shop and letting every single one of the boys slap it as hard as they can. Oh, <laughs> <is> that... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's no crying or nothing with that shit, mate. you got to fucking you gotta run the ball up with it. <laughs> yeah, get, get slapped. Nice. And so you grew up down Rubra. 
what's what was that environment sort of like you touched on uh, briefly about um partying there's a lot of testosterone down there uh what kind of like morals was instilled into you growing up in that environment well mate you, it's, you, you got your different worlds down there you got your big wave surfers you got like uh richie vast the ufc fighters you got there's two sides down room you can either go one way or go the other you know what i mean you can I can become successful because there's a lot of boys down there pushing you in the big wave surfing. But then there's that dark side where you just fall off the track, you're partying, you know. You, it's each to their own down there. With me, I sort of took more of an interest in like the older boys when you used to hear them coming down saying, there was older school boys called Loco and like Gromit and, and you hear these stories of Tony Hines and that, you know. That, mm. that fascinated me more like these old school boys that were in jail, Fucking, there was just a hectic name about them. That persona really caught my eye. What is that? Is, I, I don't know, mate. I just, just hearing the stories of the boys come down the beach, you know, I should fucking hind, he used to do this. Gromit used to run the jail, you know, shit like that. When you're young, so you're like, I don't know. So, I, it just caught my attention, that shit, for yeah. the wrong reasons. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, so, and that's where I, oh, fuck, mate, I can say I probably fell into the trap of thinking, oh, you know, it's fucking tough to go to jail and all this shit when, Really now, you know how pathetic it is, you know, like when you look back on it. Yeah, so touch on, touch on the age of 19, you, you end up in prison. So um, segue into what that sort of experience was like and going in there, lessons you learned. Well, it's, mate, what really happened from a young age, from down there, we started pretty young. We are fucking, we are little troublemakers. Who's can the whole way, <laughs> Fuck, mate. Like, we, I put my mum through hell. You know what I mean? But what happened is, because we were so young, it, I didn't really get in trouble till I hit 18. When I hit 18, fucking bang, it was all over. The cop, I, everything I ever done, I got pinched for straight to court. You know what I mean? There wasn't me, none of this getting picked up while the paddy wagon dropped home. No, so it just, sort of, it just sort of started on as like stupid little things. I, I just had this rap sheet going assaults. I ended up getting pinched for a fucking grievous bodily harm, but the bloke dropped it on me. I had assaulting coppers. And then at the time, I was, yeah, I was 18. First like, time around Zannies. One of me mm. mates said, we're on the drink. The old Zannies. Yeah, mate, the old Zanny. Like, had one of these. We're on the, we've been on the drink all day. Have a Zanny. So I had a Zanny, mate, and the rest is fucking history. I end up blacking out, you know. I can remember snippets of it. Mm, and we end thing. up, oh, mate, we end up, I end up, one of my mates saying, let's go get this uh, this brothel, right? Let's do an arm robbery on this fucking brothel. So we end up putting bellies on, you know, like everything I'm saying now we've been pinched for, you know? So yeah, it's not as if they don't know anything, you know? So I we up to this one of the houses down the river, put these fucking bellies on, gotten these big samurai swords. And this right? is when you're off your head on the zannies? On my head on the zannies, mate. Off my head on the zannies. So then we, we go, we go, there's this fucking, he said there's a, this brothel in, I don't even, probably now I don't even think there was a fucking brothel there. This is how smashed we were. So we get, we end up in Maruba Junction and we, we go into this joint and there's this big white door, there's cameras there and we're sh fucking shoving this thing, these big machetes through this door. Well, they're not budging. I don't even think it was a brothel, you know what I mean? So anyway, we fucking come out of there in Maruba Junction and we just go, fuck, let's go over to a porter. When I was in jail, it's that much of a joke. They call it the Greater Prego Heist. You know, like it's this, mate, I didn't even get a bit of chicken. So we end up, <laughs> <laughs> we end up, we end up going across the road into a Porto's, mate, and fucking yeah. with machetes, people on the fucking ground, you know, like I'm behind the counter and one of the boys go, fuck, coppers. So as we've run across the road, a highway patrol's come flying up. Three young blokes off their guts swaying fucking machetes around the street. Shit. Fuck, we've jumped into a car, right? As If the copper didn't block us in, we, we would have been off. We were on a pursuit, you know what I mean, sort of thing. And I just remember, like, well, that fuck, that I couldn't get my belly off. Mm. I couldn't get my belly car off. The coppers had the guns in the door. Fucking get out, get out. So anyway, one thing that sticks to my mind, I remember this day, is having my head on the ground with the coppers with their guns in our heads. I'll never forget it. They said there's three young males doing an attempt at armed robbery in Maroubra and the copper goes, don't worry, we've got them. You know what I mean? That's just always stuck in my head, that thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we um, went to court for it, sort of 
you know, it was at the time I had a lot of things going against me as well. The assault and the coppers was going against me. Mm, so so all, I was going, all just compounding. Hey, I was all, that was all compounding. And then for that assaulting the copper, I went to court while I was in jail going, running for the um, robbery. And the, the, I never done it, mate. The coppers just hated us. Because what happened back then, there was years ago, the boys had a, a 21st birthday down at Coogee. And on the bottom level was off-duty police officers having their Christmas party. Yeah. And at the top was a massive party of the boys. One of his 21st. Well, they've come down and they've punched the shit out of the coppers, right? The off-duty coppers is a big stink that it's on. The coppers got hammered. So from ever since that day, from that day in, always just targeting the boys. And then this Bra Boy documentary movie come out. Right, so when I've the when that, that movie, yeah. yeah, it just threw that much limelight on the joint. You couldn't even sneeze down that beach without getting arrested at this point. You know what I mean? So no matter what you done, they were just out for us. So I had this assault and the copper thing, and I went to court, and they had two of the boys were in the box. They cross examined them, and I couldn't believe it. The two coppers that were going against me had two different stories. So, but I beat the charge. And when I beat the charge, this side of the copper, uh, the courtroom was coppers and this side was full of the boys. So it was like a little victory for us. So the coppers got dirty on me. You yeah. know what I mean? From that day, they were just, it was just hell from that day in. So then I went to court and f but I beat that. So then I had the arm robbery thing going. Not that you'd call it an arm robbery. Like I said, I didn't even get a bit of sauce or a bit of chicken, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but from then on in, I, um, yeah, they were trying to give us five on the top and three on the bottom. And I, I'll, I'll never forget it. We're sitting in the box. And, the, and the, our, our, our lawyers at the time didn't want any, any of the boys around the courtroom, you know what I mean? They didn't want to have that big, like, yeah. oh, all the boys are here. Yep. So yeah. we're sitting in the box. And then just, bang, the fucking doors open. As one of the boys come kicking through the door in the middle of the courtroom and goes, bah, boys, motherfuckers. Oh, I'll just no. <laughs> I just, our heart stopped and we just, I just thought, oh my God, we're fucking going here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, we didn't, we got, I got what I got. I got that sentence, mate. And to me, I don't regret anything I've done now. Because going through that there, the jail I went through and, and to where I am now, I don't think I would have been here. Yeah. You know so what I mean? Doing what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Talk about that, that experience, um, you know, getting sentenced for that four years, two and a half years you served. What was that like when you first got in there? Like from your mindset, from you, when you first went into jail at 19 and then getting out to where you are now? Mate, it, was, it was surreal at the start because I, I was just a 19 year old, 70 kilo dripping wet little surfy. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, it was a big shock to the system. You know, I thought I was this tough little kid, whatever. Fuck, mate, it's you as you know yourself, you get in there and I'm just like, fuck, and what is this? You know what I mean? Straight yeah. in the max, so silver and that. And it's just like, it was just a big reality check. I was just thinking, like, who the fuck did I think I was out there? Yeah. You know what I mean? So then I went, I started off at Silverwater and that, then went to Parkley. But when I got moved to Long Bay, yeah. and I was in I was in Nine Ring, and at the time at Nine Ring, there was a lot of old school crims there at the time doing big wax. Mm. They were doing big wax there at the time and they used to just pull me in and just say, mate, do you want to end up like us? Do yeah. you really want to end up like one of us here that have wasted our whole life in the system? Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm talking about proper crims, you know, back yeah. in the day, big fucking... And I just, they just go, mate, if we could go back and be your age, like we'd do anything. So don't waste your life here with us sitting in the putrid little yard at Long Bay. Yeah. You know, with fucking, and, and it just always stuck with me. That, mm. That's just always stuck in my head. And they go, mate, we catch you back in here, you'll get the biggest hiding office ever. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and it's, it's sort of, that, that's always played in my mind, you know what I mean? Because you, you look, and they used to say, mate, you think you can earn, like if you want to go out and earn money, with it, everyone ends up getting pinched. Yeah. We all end up getting pinched, they said. No matter what, you'll always end up in here and it's not worth it. Yeah, and that's just you know from like seasoned criminals, you know, hard, hard knock, you know, crooks that have done the time and they're telling you as a young kid because I could relate, bro. The same, yeah, myself, you know, all the old school boys used to tell me, like, boys that have done 10, 15, 20 years, like, yeah, what are you doing? So, and that's coming from the seasoned criminals, man. So, so what else, um, kind of lessons did you take from um, being in prison? 
Well, another it was uh, from from the bay and that I, I ended up going out to Bathurst, right? Oh, like and, I'm blessed I didn't go there, bro. <laughs> oh, mate, when I, it was like something you see out of a movie. I got there late in the hour. It was like seven o'clock. I went on the truck with these three other young Aussie blokes. And I got out there, mate, and, and this was really like it was fucking surreal, mate. I got there at seven, everyone's walked into the wing, and you know how they get the old sperm with the smash mirror on it, and they're all looking down the fucking wing out there, thing, hey, like, who's coming in here? Yeah. I just thought, here we go. You know what I mean? This, this is real here. It's on here, you know? Like, I don't know, no one, I feel a million miles away from everyone out here. Mm. I got put in this cell with this old fella, right? And he was going to, I think he was going to Lisco the next day. He said to me, he goes, mate, there's a, there's an older bloke out there. He's going to try and take you under, your, under his wing. This is no word of a lie, mate. I swear on my daughter. He goes, he's going to try and take you under his wing because that bloke's are getting stood for that by us and that at the time. He goes, but it's a trap. He, he'll say, mate, he'll take you under his wing. You'll cruise with him. Another two, three weeks will go on. Uh, we'll get buy-up together. You get this buy-up. I'll get this on the buy-up. We'll have cook-ups together. Next time, let's move in together. Yeah, Next thing after the bloke's going to try and scotch, yeah, trying yeah, to milk yeah, and try yeah. and scotch your son. Yeah. Well, he yeah. left. He left. And I said to myself, you know what? I'd rather get carried out of a body bag from this joint than let that happen to me. Mm. But that situation there, and I went out in the yard next day, and two of the blokes I went with had bailed. They went to the boneyard. They were, it was like C12, they were in C34, and they just bailed. They went to whatever. And I thought, if I can handle this situation, when I get out of here, I can handle anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I can handle this shit in here, which I did and then end up meeting some of my good mates still to this day yeah, that yeah, I met yeah. from Bathurst there, you know what I mean? That yeah, I become I good see. mate. But it's something that I always thought, you know, this is a young bloke's worst nightmare to hear that shit. And, and I didn't let mm-hmm. it get a better of me. So that's what I use in the outside world now. If you can go through that shit and, 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 and survive through jail and that, well, that's when I put it to when I was getting out looking for work. You know what I mean? But did you did so, you make did you make that switch, um, sort of mindset switch when you're inside? Were you thinking, well, oh, when I get out, I'm gonna make these changes that you've now made, or did, was there like certain that day uh, that day in Bathurst, that day in Bathurst, I thought to myself because he left. It was a day or two after I was in the cell. I didn't have a TV or nothing. You know what I mean? Like to me, to oh. people, I, I yeah, didn't have a pillow or nothing. I kept getting moved. To people out here, they might not understand, like, a pillow's a pillow, but to us, fuck, yeah. you, you don't realise what that's... Eh? You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just said to myself, fuck this joint. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I can get through this, if I can do that, fuck this joint. This is a waste of life, you know? I'm, living, I'm losing the best times of my life in here. Mm. You know what I mean? Because at that time, I was my mates were traveling the world. You know what I mean? They're going to Europe, going to wherever. I'm traveling around New South Wales in the back of a fucking boob truck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just like, mate, I just, I just said to myself, that's it from that day. But I thought to myself, I will never put my mum through this again. 100%. Ever. You know what I mean? Because we can do it like we do it easier in there. And, and like I said before, my mom, she's a beautiful woman, doesn't even swear. And for me to put through her, that never missed a visit. You know mm. what I mean? She never, well, ever hey, missed know, a visit. You know, you know who, who your loyal family and friends are, bro, when you end up mate. doing bars, bro. Oh, mate. And money, you know? Constantly them putting money in for your buyouts, for your phone, you know? Never wins once about it. Mm. No matter where I was, never wins once. And, and for them to go through them visits, like the screws putting shit on them, it's just fuck that. Yeah. You know what again. I mean? Never again. Never do that to them either, you know? So then you make this transition, so you get out of prison. What um age did you get out? Twenty one? Yeah, closer to the yeah, twenty one, like getting on yeah, twenty nearly twenty to twenty one, I think. Yeah, yeah. So definitely had me twenty first and that in there. Oh man. Worst thing ever <laughs> birthdays in jail, you don't even want to celebrate it. So you get, so you get out of prison at twenty one. Um, what was that transition like um, adjusting to the outside world, like looking for work, adjusting to uh, life on the outside? What sort of challenges well, did you face? Well, I got out, right, and I sort of kicked back for a little bit, but in my head, the main thing was if for me to not go back into that system, I have to work. I have to get a structure. Mm. You know what I mean? I have to get that structure back in my life. So I got out. 
and I had I had the two more years to do a parole, which mate, it wasn't easy with finding work. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like it um even the constant hassle of the police as well, you know what I mean? So like when I got out I went to um I tried for heaps of jobs. Like I tried for no one wants to know ya Once you when you've on. got yeah, and I feel like saying them like for fuck's sake, like I tried to rob a portos, it's a joke. You know what I mean? But no one if that doesn't come up on your rap sheet, it's armed robbery. That's all that they look at. You know what I mean? So I went for numerous jobs, mate. Numerous where even me old man could have got me on the six weeks on, six weeks off on the ships. You go out for six weeks on the boats or four yep. weeks, whatever. The blokes on the boat said, mate, he's a walk up start, but he's just got to get through the criminal checks. Knock back oh, for that. Oh, yep. And then I go for uh, like driving a truck. You got um, fuel tankers to have a license to drive that fuel. You got to have a, um, a dangerous goods. Knock back for that. It just kept getting knocked back, knocked back, knocked back. But that's why I go back to being in jail. If I can go through that, mm. this is a walk in the park for yeah, me yeah, out here. It's a breeze, eh? This is a breeze. You know what I mean? Like if you can get through all that shit, don't get me wrong. I had some good times in the nick with the boys, the laughs and that. Yeah, 100%. but this. This is real life stuff. So if I can go through all that, this is when it's really going to count, you know what I mean? So I, I end up getting knocked back from everything. But I, I finished my two years parole squeaky clean. I had, a, I had, a, um, I had so I, like I said, the first thing I want to do was travel when I finish my parole. So I finished my parole, two weeks off parole, had a, a trip to Thailand, um, Bali, surfing with the boys for a good couple of months, booked, everything ready to go. Two weeks off parole, I'm sitting down the beach, all these cop cars start coming down the beach. I have everything I've ever done, I've done, but I've never done anything this day. And I'm sitting there, a paddy wagon pulls up, two normal cars pull up. And we're sitting there. I'm sitting with best mate, Jakey North. He's sitting next to me. And he goes, fuck, I just had this gut feeling. What's going on in? Yeah. Sort of thing. And I, he goes, anyway, they start looking at me. And we're sitting down in this grass pit. It's called Barbie Hill. Where we have barbecues and that down the beach. Big teams of us get down there. And they're standing up the top of the hill. And... They're looking at me and I'm thinking, fuck, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Like, and then me. Jake, yeah, Jake goes, mate, they try and get you for anything. I'll just say it was me. You know what I mean? Like, what a, what a, what a weapon saying that for me. I was like, yeah, nah, soldier. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But I was just like, but I was just like, mate, I've done nothing. Well, they come down there, you come talk to us. Up I go, they go, you're under arrest. I said, for what? They go, mate, we've got your, um, intimidating people in public, you walk around swinging a pole at people. I go, what? And anyway, pinch me, right? Put me no. through all this shit. Yeah, I'm two weeks off parole. Slap me with like reporting five days a week. All these, all these bail conditions, everything. And I'm just thinking, fuck, I've just done all that. I've just gone all that two years parole another and bang, hurdle. I'm here to square one. Another hurdle, another hurdle for bro. something I didn't even do. Go through court. I get through all this court. It just kept going on and on. I sit in there this day in the courtroom just thinking, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, this I didn't do, but they've just made up all this fucking bullshit. The judge goes, there's no case. I'm throwing it out. And I just like, I, I couldn't believe it, mate. Because you know what? At the end of that, all the money that I lost on legal representatives again. I lost my holidays. I lost everything. Mate, everything. And it was out the window, but I said, you know what? I'm not going to let them get the better of me. I'm not going to let it get better of me. And then from then, things just started falling into place for me because I didn't make excuses. Oh, fuck, poor me. Poor this, poor that. You know what I, you know what I mean? I, I, didn't brother, fall in, I didn't fall into that trap. You know what I mean? So Because really, everything that I've done as a kid probably led up to me still copping all this shit now. You know what I mean? So I, I, a job come up in a concrete with Borrell. They're, they're uh, driving a concrete truck. So I just, I, I took it on, you know, and, and uh, in that job, you can go on to own your own truck. You know, you can either be a company driver or own your own truck. So I, um, it was, yeah, two years I went there as a company driver and I just, I just thought to myself one day, you know what, I'm going to give it a go and, and go and try and buy my own truck, which they're a quarter of a million dollars. They're, two, they're 220,000. So, I, I rang the I rang the manager of the of the job and I just said, mate, how's it about giving me a contract? You know, for he said, you know what, you're the youngest bloke that's ever come through here and ever tried to have a go. He said, don't let me down. I said, mate, I, w I wouldn't dare let you down. 
And I never looked back. I, I, in five years, I paid that 220 off. And, and, now, and now I've got a successful business running debt-free. Debt-free, mate. And so, so when, you, when you sat down, you made that call um, to the office, did you have, was that sort of the plan? To own the tr- own the truck and then start yeah, operating, mate. and that sort of yeah, that, that 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 was the plan. I, I set myself that goal. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay this thing off. And don't get me wrong, back then you got a lot of people saying, ah, don't waste your time. You know the haters come in, you're fucking, you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna be able to do this. But then you you always got I've always got me staunch stick family there. And then at the, and then things just started falling into place, and I got me beautiful Mrs. Becky. You know she come in beautiful tighten the ship down a lot you know what i mean like she pulled me reins in and then we have a beautiful little daughter so everything just started rolling on started falling into place to give me even more of a of a drive to pay this thing off and put us so everything i do now for them nice bro that's that's a beautiful success story on a man on his road to redemption um i love it bro what has your sort of partner because i could relate to having that supportive um wife and also a baby girl how 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 good's kids bro <laughs> oh mate she keeps me on me toes me little oh, girl i'll tell you that much hey, hey dude sometimes do you look at her and be like man you're so frustrated but then you see you see yourself doing the same yeah <laughs> oh big time that's what me old man and me mum and that say when she's giving me shit they go we love it we love it you deserve every bit of it karma, karma bro <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so definitely, has, mate. So has she been a big support, um, your missus and obviously your, your baby girl, you know, now you've got a different vision, different purpose. Um, how, like, how important is that to you? Oh, mate, it's, it's everything. Because you, you don't realise, like, now I look at it, mate, sometimes still to this day, I, I still, you still get shit from your past. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, even with my, even with my business, right, I still, I still have, I still have insurance companies not going near me. They won't come near me. You know what I mean? Or sometimes if you want to, like, I still want to travel to America and that, and it's fucking hard. You know what I mean? Like, but my little, if my little one sees something on the TV or my missus and they want to go to America, well, I'm dragging them down from my past. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now, everything that I do now is for my missus and for my little girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's. To me, what I get joy out of is seeing them happy, and, and, and that, you, you can't beat that, mate. You know what I mean? That's that. This is the life. This is the life. Like a family man is what I want to be. You know what I mean? And that's the that's what I'm living now, brother. You know? And it's more meaningful, and I can hear it in your voice, bro. Like the purpose and uh, that drive that you have now, and watching your stuff on um, social media. Um, so, what is what is the the business, um, the operating cause, so you can? Give a little plug for your business and also your social media um, handle. Well, I mean, this is I, I, I see. I run through Bowl. They give me heaps. Of, they give me the work. You know what I mean? That's that's the good things about Bowl. I, I don't chase money and I don't chase work. It's all there. You know, and and just my social media, mate. Look, if anyone's ever out there that, that have been through this, you know, like they can always jump on and, and talk to me. And you know? I'm always out there to talk to anyone because, you know. People go through shit, you know what I mean? And and at the end of the day, there's always there's always another day coming, you know? So, I don't know. And I, I just see it with the young fellas and that. I, I, yeah, I give, just, us, give us some advice. Give us That's the last question I have there. Give us some advice for a young little um, kid down Maruba Beach or around the area or a young little kid watching this. You know, you went through that um, road of ending up in prison and coming out the other end. What sort of advice do you have for them, bro? Well, mate, look... Just be yourself. Whatever you are, be it. You know what I mean? Don't try and... Oh, like I used to see older blokes, tough blokes, whatever, and you used to I want to be like that. Mm. Just be yeah. yourself. Whatever you're born as, whatever you are, be yourself. Because at the end of the day, yeah, it's good and proper to get in out of jail, think this, damn tough on this. It, when, when you get to an age, yeah, you're going through them younger ages, yeah, it probably is that good tough look to go to jail and people respect you and all this. But as you get older, no one gives a fuck. Mm. You get older, people start having kids, people have families, start getting business. No one gives a fuck about that shit back then. Yeah. But yeah. you've done all that. Your past never leaves you. It never, ever leaves you. And I just think you will never get anywhere in life as long as you've got an excuse in front of you. Mm. You will never get anywhere, mate. So for the young kids and that out there, just enjoy life because you don't understand how good freedom is until it's gone from you. Yeah. That's what I mean? Thank so, you, bro. 100%. 
Yeah. Hundred percent. Nah, but thank you for that, Clarky man. I appreciate your time. Appreciate the man that you're you're becoming and and all the changes that you made, bro. Um, I love watching the journey, bro. But if anyone's watching this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and go follow. Uh, is it De at Dean Clark on Instagram? Are you Facebook, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dean Clark. Uh, Dean Clark two hundred three five, brother. Dean Clark two hundred three five. Um, and yeah, follow the brother's journey. Um, but yeah, inspire change by speaking your truth. My man, Dean Clark. Much love, brother. Always, Thanks always a pleasure, brother. Always, Thanks for jumping mate. On and much love to you and your family, bro. Right back at you, brother. Big love, mate. For the record, yeah. For the record, yeah. For the record, for the record.